Hello, I'm Dan Weisey. I'm the product support guy with the Lessman Instrument Company. And we have here today the Lessman Instrument Bubbler Panel. And it's hooked up and operating. As you can see, there's a transparent pipe over here. And it's bubbling away to indicate what the level of the water of it is. And you'll see up here in the display that it's indicating that it's 2.9 feet. That's decimal feet. And then the, in the display up here, this is a loop powered indicator. It's not part of the panel. It's a separate item, but we put it up here to show you that the output signal from the panel goes out to a control system somewhere, typically, and that a loop-powered indicator like this can run off that signal. And this particular indicator will show the level in either feet and fractional inches or feet and decimal inches, the same number that you'd see up there. But there are some people that actually like feet and fractional inches, like 14 feet and three-quarter inches because that's the way they've traditionally done it. So I want to tell you what our, uh, why we got into the panels, and that's about a year and a half ago, somebody came to us and said, you know, you've quoted me all this stuff that makes up a bubbler system, but I don't have the wherewithal or the resources to put it in a panel and get it all together. Can you do that for us? And we said, sure, and we proceeded to do that, and we realized that a lot of people don't want to buy the components. They want to buy a finished panel ready to go and just put it in and get it running. And when I say ready to go, this is the panel and we don't supply any of the piping that goes into it. This is supply air coming into a fitting on the bottom. This is the regulated air going out to the bubbler and it go, comes out of a fitting on the bottom. But we do supply a panel that's got all the components inside. They're all wired, they're all plumbed, we even adjust it to the settings that people want. In other words, if you want gallons or a volume reading on the display here, we'll set it up to do gallons. If you want it in feet, we'll set it up for feet. If you want it in inches, we'll set it up for inches. So we'll do it the way that you want it to do so that when you get it there, you mount it. It's got the brackets on the panel right here. You plumb up the inlet supply here. You plumb up what goes out to the dip tube and you supply electrical power. And I'll show you inside the panel here. There's the inside of the panel. We've just hooked up a line cord right here to a wall outlet so that we have power to run the thing. Our intention of this was to design a product that was, first of all, reliable. Secondly, that it would be simple to maintain. And the third thing is that you'd have the peace of mind that we're using proven components in here that are going to last a long time. And I'll go through this, but as an example, this constant flow regulator down here, that's, that's is the same design that Moore used 70 years ago. It's exactly the same instrument. And it's still in production today because it's such a reliable device that that's the, the device that people want to run their bubblers. And the last thing is that we wanted a panel that you didn't need a PC or software to work on. Everything in here that might need some kind of configuration, like the display here, it has a display and it has push buttons, so you can configure it with the push buttons. Same thing with the transmitter here. There's a display, and up here under the little door, there are push buttons so that you can readjust the level on there if you need to. The, this device adjusts with a screwdriver, and the timers here have push buttons and a display in order to set it up in the field without needing a PC or software. Now, one note on this that I want to let you know about is that Lessman does not supply any of the piping or tubing outside of the panel. So all this stuff that we've got here running up to the dip tube, the inlet supply, that's uh, done in the field. I should note on a dip tube, this is the, dip, this is the operating dip tube over here. It's a half inch uh, length of PVC pipe same thing here, half inch PVC. Uh, you got to make it so that it's compatible with whatever you're putting it in. And water PVC is fine, probably in caustic and acid. I don't know about acid, but caustic it seems to work okay. But it could be steel or copper, whatever's available. People fabricate them on site. And here's an example of what the bottom of the dip tube looks like. There's an inverted or a V notch in it. When it's installed, it looks like that. And the level is actually indicated by where that, with the elevation of that little peak in the notch of the V-Rite is there. They also work if you do it, it with an angle cut, in which case it's the uppermost portion of the open pipe that is the zero point for the level. 
I don't think we can see it down there because it's all the way down there, but the one in the bottom does have the V-notch cut into it. The panel itself is conventional NEMA 4 construction, which means it's weather tight. It's got a big door gasket on here right there. It's got a latch. When you, when you push it closed, I can't push it because of the uh, tubing on there, but when you push it closed, it's got the quarter turn latch on there that secures it, but that keeps it weather tight. The digital indicator is a conventional eighth DIN horizontal mount. It's a precision digital meter. We've handled precision digital for 30 years now, and we've got some of them that are still the original devices out there. They tend to be very reliable. The upper display shows you the level or volume number, the process variable. The bottom part of the display shows the units. And on the back, there's all the wiring for two relays that can be control or alarm relays and a retransmit digital input, digital output, or an analog digital input output signal that's the 4 to 20 that goes back to the control system. The transmitter here does not show the level directly because most levels have, are, if they're not water, if there's something else, there's a specific gravity or density factor that has to be uh, accounted for. So the indicator does that with its uh, compensation factor to give you true level to compensate for density or specific gravity. So inside the panel, we've got supply air coming in on a bulkhead fitting here. The regulated out goes out this one over here, and then back where you can't see it, there's another bulkhead fitting that's a drain for the filter back there. Now, in running a bubbler, they're incredibly, incredibly reliable as long as you have a consistent air supply. You lose the air supply, you don't have a bubbler because there's no air pressure to push the bubbles up the tube. The thing about air supply is that everybody will tell you it's got to be clean, dry air, and it should be instrument quality air. In other words, it should have a low dew point with almost no moisture in it and very clean with no particulate in it. A lot of people tend to run their bubblers on compressed air. Well, nowadays with compressors that are not piston driven with oil in them, you get rid of a lot of the oil factor, they're diaphragm driven, so you don't have the, the oil. But nonetheless, you still get dirt in there, and dirt will gum up this little device right here, the constant flow regulator, and if that thing gums up, then you don't have a bubble anymore. So we put a coalescing filter in it, and I've got one right here. This is the coalescing filter with a regulator over on this side. The drain comes out the bottom, but in order to change the filter, you just pop that off like that. There's the filter. Filter comes off. You stick another one on. Put the uh, well back on there like that. Screw it in there, and it has a little indicator on the top that turns red over time depending on how much differential pressure loss you lose across the filter right here. So if it shows red, you know it's time to change the filter on the bottom down there. There's a little lever down here you press in order to drain the water out of the bowl and it exhausts out the bottom through the port on the bottom through the bulkhead. The pressure gauge on there just allows you to regulate the incoming pressure down to something that's reasonable for the uh, uh, constant flow regulator. We do a coalescing filter because a coalescing filter has a, it's a 0.3 micron filter in there and it tends to take out all the water and all the oil except for oil vapor. Oil vapor can actually get through there, but it catches most of the oil. Oil's the wicked one because that's what collects gum and that's what finally uh, gums up a uh, regulator with the little tiny orifices in there. This is the constant flow regulator right here. And a constant flow regulator conserves the air that goes into the bubbler system. This, you can see the rotometer on here. The little floating ball tells you what the flow rate is and it's currently set at about one and a half standard cubic feet per hour. So that's not a lot of air. One cubic foot per hour going out the tube, becoming bubbles and running up through the uh, process there. A regular pressure regulator would tend to throw a lot of air out when the level was low and then less air as the level got higher. This gives you a constant flow of bubbles all the time, constant flow rate. And again, particularly for people that plumb this with or use argon or nitrogen or CO2 as their gas. Uh, this will uh, conserve that resource without just blowing excessive bubbles down the pipe and out and uh, not getting any value out of the gas. Our pressure transmitter here 
is a Siemens industrial pressure transmitter. It is a heart transmitter, and there are connections on terminal block to get in there and program it with heart. But again, it's got the display and the push buttons on it so that it can be set up to run uh, anything that you need to do. The units, lower range value, upper range value, damping factor, they're all settable with the push buttons on there. Again, we'll set this up for you when you order it, so all you do is install it and run it. But if you need to make a change in the field, you can do it just with the push buttons in the uh, display. By the way, this has a, I got a document from Siemens, says this has a 460 year mean time between failure, MBTF, um, or MTBF factor on that. Uh, so that, it's, it tends to have a long lifespan on there. We would expect a 15 year lifespan easily out of a, the Siemens transmitter. On the front panel here, we got a push button, momentary push button, and that's for the purge or the blowdown circuit. The issue is, is that a lot of times dip tubes go into something that's really crappy and stuff, even though you got bubbles coming out of it, stuff will get back up in the tube and block the tube. When the tube blocks, this level will become unreasonably high because the constant regulator is trying to push air at higher, higher pressures to get it through the tube. Can't get it through the tube because the tube's blocked, so the level becomes very high. In order to clear the tube, you hold the push button in and it puts direct line pressure coming in here directly on the outlet right there. And if you got incoming line pressure, which most people do of 70, 80, 90 PSI, that's a whole lot of air running down a 3 8 or a half inch line to the dip tube. I can't demonstrate it here because if I were to push the button and do that, it would literally blow the dip tube right out of the uh, pipe right there and blow all the water out also. We'd have a wet ceiling because it's a lot of air going down that tip tube all at once, but it's a good way to clean the tube out. These timers up here, again, they can be, those time intervals can be adjusted with a push button and a display in the field. You don't need a PC or software to do that. Again, I'd like to reiterate that when we build this, we want you to get something that's ready to go. You tell us what you want, level or volume, what the units are, what the specific gravity is, and we will program the thing for you to get it out there running so that all you have to do is plumb it up, wire it up, mount it, and uh, it'll be ready to go. So for a ready-to-go bubbler panel, please call the Lessman Instrument Company or email us at sales at Thank you.